I'm from India and I've uh, been a Hindu by birth and so we worship I don't know how many idols and how many so-called gods and uh, like in India you have over 300 million gods so whatever you want to worship you can worship but the whole focus was performance the whole focus was do well in life be nice to people then I got into one of the top schools in India for uh, MBA business studies but after I reached there I realized I wasn't doing that well and my grades were not you know the top so I started getting depressed I started feeling why is this happening why am I not doing well and I started sensing that there must be something between me and God that has gone wrong otherwise God wouldn't let me go through all this as I started just saying I have to appease the gods I have to make them happy with me I'm really desperate if I don't get help I might go crazy or I might do something you know, I might run away or kill myself I don't know and I was so down and uh, so I started praying to my favorite uh, Indian God called Ganesha Ganesha is like the elephant God and he is the God of education of knowledge you know? and as a student you know, I said oh if he's on my side I'll do well so as I started praying I closed my eyes I knew the shlokas by heart as I prayed I saw a male tusker a big huge Indian elephant charged towards me as I closed my eyes and prayed. And I opened my eyes and I said, this is really bad because even my favorite God, Ganesha, has turned away from me. But they're not telling me why. What did I do? Can, if, if they'll just tell me, I can change. And no one was answering. And then I remembered I had a Gideon's Bible, you know, a little small Bible that had got free in school. And so I opened that and I started reading. I don't even remember what I read. I don't know what I read, totally I don't know. But in a matter of few seconds, you know, something very tangible and which was almost like white light. You know, when I sensed it, I knew it was so clean, it was so strong, and so forceful. Just flowed through me, you know, from the top of my head and flowed right down to my feet. And as the flow uh, happened, just lifted off so many of my fears and burdens. My sister woke up and it was, she, she says it's about two o'clock in the morning or something. I don't know, I just don't remember. And uh, she saw me and she said, my goodness, your face is glowing. Something has happened. What happened? And I told her, don't worry, Jesus is there. He'll take care of me. So uh, the next vacation, I came back to my home city and uh, I met the pastor of my church in India, which is New Life Fellowship. And uh, he led me in the prayer. He told me what, what it means to be born again. I still tell everyone that I meet, I say, he's the only God who communicates. He's the only God who will answer you where you are. A lot of my friends immediately turned away from me, called me names. They said, oh, you're a fanatic. You are a rebel. You, you amount to nothing. You're a waste. You know, because now you have Jesus as a crutch for you. I had to confront my own faith, you know, my Hindu religion. I had to confront. And it was difficult initially because uh, it's like, why only Jesus? You know, what's so special about you that is different from all my other gods? Because in the, the Hindu faith, it's like all roads lead to the same God. You know, everyone somewhere gets to the door, but it's not true. Only Jesus is the door. Only Jesus is the one person that we can go through. Everything else is the wall and you can never get past that. And I remember fighting with Jesus and saying, why did you make it so complex? I mean, why don't you, I mean, why, why didn't you make 100 doors, 300 doors, so that somehow we'll all enter in? He said, actually, I made it so simple. I'm saying there's only one door, so that you don't get confused. Because even if I made 100 doors, the enemy is going to make 1,000 doors, which is going to complicate even more. So I said, there's only one door, and I'm that door. Come through me to the Father.